Today on Foundation Lady, we're going to be talking about the brand new Hourglass Ambient Soft Glow Foundation, and I'm going to be doing a demo of shade number three. So just before we get going, let me mention that I started out by putting on the MAC Mineralized Time Check Lotion, which will be important to remember for later. So as I start applying the Hourglass Ambient Soft Glow Foundation on the left side of my face, let's take a look at a swatch of shade 3, which is what I'm wearing today. On top is a freshly applied swatch, and on bottom is a dry swatch. I bought this foundation for $58 US from Sephora, so she ain't a cheap date. You get one fluid ounce or 30 mil. It comes in 32 inclusive shades. It contains less than 1% synthetic fragrance, no SPF, it's vegan, cruelty-free, and right now has a 97% approval rating on Sephora, which I honestly can't remember the last time I saw such high ratings for a foundation. So this formula is supposed to have a natural finish, it's supposed to be long wearing, and it's a medium coverage. Now, you may have noticed as I've been applying this foundation, I've stopped every once in a while to do this press and roll technique, if you will, on my skin. And the reason why is because every once in a while, the foundation seems to be catching on my skin a bit. And the best way to break it up and smooth it out is to do the press and roll. I mentioned that I would be bringing up the MAC Mineralized Time Check Lotion, which to me almost feels like a cross between a moisturizer and one of these newer inventions out, these hydrating but sticky primers like the Milk Makeup Hydro Grip Primer or the Elf Power Grip Primer. And of course, when I use the word sticky, I mean that in a positive way in the sense that it's helping the foundation to adhere to the skin for longer. So this feels like a cross between a moisturizer and one of those primers. Now this is a good product and this is a good product, but at this point I'm starting to get the feeling that these two are just not playing well together. As you know, my videos are a bit more like science experiments versus a yes or no, this foundation is quote good or bad because Obviously, foundation is so subjective to the person using it, their skin type, their coverage preference, etc. Therefore, I try to give all the facts, I tell you my personal experience with it, who I think it will be best for, and then I leave it to you to see if you think it'll work for you. Because I approach it this way, for the most part, I try to always use the same skin prep and moisturizer so that every foundation is starting from a level playing field. The one exception being when I'm feeling extra dry and I need to add just a bit more moisture, then I will add a mild, non-sticky hydrating primer, one that just really feels more like a moisturizer. So what possessed me to go in with a new product before applying this new foundation? I have no idea. So I decided to remove everything from the left side and put it on again using my regular moisturizer to see if it's just the MAC and Hourglass conflicting on the skin. So the good news is it went on much better with my normal moisturizer. It still took just a little bit of finessing to get it all even, but much better. The bad news is I forgot to press record as I was putting on the foundation for the second time. So you're going to have to just take my word for it. So again, two good products, just not good together. So now we're getting somewhere with this foundation. And yes, I did decide to leave the other side just as it was for further comparison throughout the day. This foundation is supposed to be both light diffusing and blurring. At first I wasn't sure if I saw those particular effects, but then as I was kind of out and about throughout the day, when I would catch a glimpse of my skin in the mirror, I was amazed at how blurred my pores were. Now, if you made it this far into the video, I'm going to let you in on my biggest tip about this foundation. So recently, the NARS Light Reflecting Foundation has been taking the makeup world by storm. If you remember my previous review on it, the NARS also has the blurring spheres to minimize the look of pores, which is one of the most innovative aspects of it. But some people may not like the slightly dewier finish that comes with the NARS foundation. 
So if you're someone who really wants the blurring effect of the NARS Light Reflecting Foundation, but you prefer a more matte finish, I really think you should check this one out. So that brings me to a new section I'm trying in my videos called Accolades and Alerts, or the good, the bad, and the pretty about the foundation. Let's start with the accolades. Number one, hands down, the blurring aspect. I was super impressed with how poreless my skin looked. Next, I like how innovative Hourglass is with this foundation. I love that they're really playing with light diffusing and optical spheres. It truly is a unique foundation, not one that they just slapped in a bottle and said, hey, we have a new foundation. Next, I love that I don't have to wear powder with this one because it just kind of dried to a soft finish, which I was able to put my other products right on top of with no problem. And although I think those with dry skin could make this work, I think those with normal to oily skin will be the ones who like this the most. And now for my alerts. First off, be aware that this foundation can be a little finicky when using other products with it. I've already talked at length about the MAC moisturizer that I tried underneath, but also my concealer, which I successfully used with many other foundations, didn't seem to adhere to this one very well. Also, the application wasn't the easiest for this formula. Even when I went back in with my regular moisturizer, there were still certain areas of my face that I had to go back over and try to even out. Next up, if you have acne or red spots, be aware of the coverage level of this one. I'm recovering from my vacation acne flare up, but I still have some inflamed red spots. And I found that this offered me a bit less coverage on those spots than I would have expected. I've mentioned that I think that if you have dry skin, you could make this work, but if you have very dry skin, this might be one that you want to get a sample of first to make sure that it feels comfortable on the skin. And finally, this is supposed to be sweat and humidity resistant along with having a 16 hour wear. Now we had a very hot and humid day when I was wearing this, and I wanted to warn you, especially my glasses wearers, that you will probably need to use just a little bit of powder over the bridge of your nose because as you can see here, after just five minutes of being outside, I had a mark in the foundation that had completely come off. And if you look at my end of day pics, this was taken after about eight or nine hours and unfortunately it had almost completely worn off. Now keep in mind, I didn't use any powder to set it, but I did use a very strong setting spray. So this foundation has been getting rave reviews. I'd love to hear from you. Have you tried it yet? Are you planning to try it? Please let me know what you think of this one. Stay tuned for swatches and Norm and have a beautiful day. I'll see you soon. Are you enjoying the sunshine?